Welcome to a special holiday themed episode of How to Terrarium. In this episode, I'm going to be killing two birds with one stone. I'm going to show you how to make a natural looking, yet festive ornament terrarium that also doubles as a hanging terrarium. That being said, you're probably not going to want to put this terrarium away at the end of the season. Therefore, I'm going to show you how to hang it up in front of your window so that you can enjoy it year round. In any effect, I hope you guys really enjoy this episode and Merry Christmas. You're going to need a fair amount of materials for this project, all of which are relatively easy to obtain. To begin, we will start with the container. We're using a craft ornament that you could get from a craft store for pretty cheap. I even saw both sizes at the dollar store, so these are inexpensive and easy to find to say the least. You also need some corks because the current lids aren't suitable for a terrarium. You also need some kind of durable string or cord. I'm using hemp cord because it's thin while also being pretty strong. You will also need the proper tools to work in your terrarium. I'm using tweezers, some bamboo skewers, one of which has a q-tip tape to the end, and a dowel rod. Further you will need some sort of funnel, a glass jar or two, a drill with an appropriately sized bit, some screw in hooks, and an ornament hanger or wire. I just took a hook from an old ornament. As I said in the beginning this is a 2 in 1 episode, so I will be making two terrariums side by side. The larger one will be a hanging terrarium, while the other one is meant to be hung on a tree for now. To begin we are going to prep the container for our intended purpose. Let's remove the metal caps that are currently on the top. You could use this later to hide the cork, but I like to go for a more rustic look. So mine are going into my scrap pile for a potential future project. After removing the metal cap, put your cork in place. Push it firmly down and then get your drill. Drill a single hole all the way through the middle of the container's neck. After doing so, grab your string and test to make sure it fits through the newly drilled hole. It should fit snugly, but loose enough that you can string it with minimal effort. That being said, choose your bit based on the thickness of your string. Then remove this string and set it aside for later. As you can see, the corks are a little tall for our containers. You can leave them as they are if it doesn't bother you, but for this demonstration, I would like to make them a bit smaller. Visually decide where the cork should be cut and then remove it from the container. Then get an X-Acto knife or something similar and cut off the excess piece. I will say again that cutting the corks is a totally optional process. Working with these containers could be tough because they're rounded. Fortunately, there's an easy solution to our dilemma thanks to our jars. As you can see, I chose jars that were appropriately sized for each container. Further, I'm using some glue dots to better keep them in place on the jars. You could just as well use masking tape if you don't have these. After doing so, your container is ready to go. As with nearly all of our terrariums, we are going to make a false bottom. Being that this terrarium will likely hang on a tree, we have to keep it as light as possible. That being said, we will make a false bottom strictly using a bit of sand. Any kind of sand will work for this procedure, and in my case I am simply using place sand. I will also reiterate that the purpose of this layer is to keep the soil separate from the water that will sit on the bottom of the terrarium. This will help ensure that your terrarium lasts long term. Anyways, get your funnel and gently put sand into it. You don't need to put very much in, just enough to create a small layer. I like to use the bamboo skewer to feed it through the funnel's opening. After adding enough sand, remove your funnel and use your utensils to smooth out the sand. Next, let's add the substrate mix. I will be using the same funnel method as before. 
Also, I'm using my typical blend of tropical substrate that is also safe for use with animals. Follow the link on the screen to learn how to make it for yourself. A rule that I like to follow is to assess how much sand was put in the terrarium and add at least twice as much substrate. After getting a good amount of substrate into your terrarium, smooth it out using your utensils. This is when the dowel rod really comes in handy. Also, when using the funnel method, you should have minimal mess both inside and outside of your terrarium. That's why I like to use it. Now for the fun part, we are going to decorate and plant our terrariums. Being that this is meant to be a festive terrarium, I chose all my materials with great consideration. You could of course use whatever you have, but I wanted to show you how to make a natural looking terrarium that is holiday themed at the same time. For my decorations I simply chose some tiny pine cones. What is more festive than a pine cone? My plants include some white reindeer lichen, commonly referred to as reindeer moss, to use as living tufts of snow, two types of slaginella, commonly referred to as spike moss, oak leaf creeping fig which is one of my personal favorites, and various types of temper mosses. I chose the slaginellas because they resemble a pine tree. I also chose the oak leaf creeping fig because in my opinion, it fits this aesthetic fairly well. And moss for obvious reasons. I like it. Now let's begin to decorate. Generally I like to landscape first using my larger elements, in this case the pine cones. This is commonly referred to as hardscaping. I will then use these elements to dictate how my terrarium will be designed. You will never see me add things to my terrariums that make them look unnatural. But if you want to add additional holiday flavor, go for it. Remember, these plants will grow into their new home, so you don't need to overdo it. Take your time and intently place all of your items to achieve the best results. Once you have come up with something that you really like, it's time to move on to the final steps. Also, remember that Q-tip? I sometimes use this to clean the inside of my terrariums if necessary. You really shouldn't have much mess though since we use the funnel method. Now we are going to add water to our terrariums. I would like to tell you that there is a special formula to use when doing this, but there are a lot of factors that make this difficult. For example, there is moisture in most of our materials already, and this will always vary, in effect making it nearly impossible for me to tell you an exact amount. That being said, I can tell you how much I used and what not to do. I used about 2 teaspoons of water for the small terrarium and about 4-5 to five teaspoons for the larger one. You don't want your water level to exceed the depth of the sand, otherwise it will make our false bottom of none effect. As you can see I'm once again using my funnel to direct the water into the opening and to prevent making a mess. I will also mention that if your tray remains condensated at all times, you have overwatered it. Simply open your container and remove the condensation using the q-tip until this stops occurring. However, you want to see some condensation on the side nearest to the window in the morning and evening hours. If you don't see this happening, you've likely underwatered your terrarium. Add more as needed. 
Also, make sure not to use water straight out of the tap. Use distilled, reverse osmosis, water treated with drops, or anything similar. After adding the water, we can close our terrarium. When putting your cork in place, make sure to line up all the holes. There are a lot of ways that you could tie the string, but I will only show you two for this demonstration. Here is method one. Begin by feeding some of the string through the hole. Make one end much shorter than the other as seen here. Then tie the string together, in effect making a loop with some excess string on the shorter side. Then tightly wrap the long end around the neck of the container until it's completely covered. Then wrap this string around the already created loop until you get to the side with the knot. Then wrap the string around the neck a few more times and tie it on the end of the loop that doesn't already have a knot. As you can see this is pretty strong. Now simply snip off the excess string. If you thought that that was a mouthful then this next method is for you. We will simply feed this cord through the hole and tie it as tight as possible. I don't think this looks as cool as the previous but it's much easier. You could always cover your cork with a piece of cloth or burlap to create a totally unique look as well. Now that our containers are sealed and ready to go, we just have to add the hanging mechanisms. For our hanging terrarium, we'll simply double up the string and tie it to the loop using another loop as seen here. This part will then get tied to the ceiling hook as you will see shortly. Finally, for your ornament terrarium, just get your ornament wire or something similar and wrap it around the string. This terrarium is pretty light, so the wire really shouldn't come undone. Now for the final step. Getting your terrarium properly placed isn't difficult. I'll show you how to place the hanging one first. Simply get your drill and make a small hole in the ceiling. Then get your hooks and screw them into place. I'm putting up two hooks because I know that my terrarium will be going here after the holiday season or after my mom notices that there's a terrarium hanging on her display tree. Then put your string over the hook and decide on the proper height of your terrarium. Once you find a good height from the ceiling, tie it into place. Then simply cut off the excess string. Now on to the ornament. Keep in mind that our terrariums need light to survive and Christmas lights won't be sufficient. Luckily in most cases Christmas trees are placed in front of a window. That being said, locate a prime spot on the side near the window, then wrap your wire around the branch and enjoy. That pretty much sums it up. Now you know how to make hanging terrariums that can double as Christmas ornaments. Merry Christmas and Happy Terrarium!